thank you very much for making a date on the marketplace. Welcome back. My Ghana chapter of Women in Maritime Africa, WIMA, says discrimination against women in the industry is denying them of existing opportunities. President of WIMA, Ghana, Captain Hannah Agri, says the industry is male-dominated despite distinct qualities possessed by their female counterparts. According to Captain Agri, Africa Union has directed member states to form the group which is to address peculiar challenges this small in this report. Captain Hannah Agri says the formation of women in maritime Africa across the continent will help empower women in the maritime sector. Despite several impediments in the way of women in the industry, she believes women can achieve a lot if given the opportunity. She disclosed this in an interview after the launch of the Ghana chapter of Women in Maritime Africa, the regional maritime university at Nungwa in Accra. So in the maritime industry, there's discrimination because initially the industry was meant for men. But by God's grace, our first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, of blessed memory, gave us that opportunity for us women to enter. And as I speak, Ghana has trained five good women captains. And I believe today you saw, so two of us here. The challenge in the industry is that men will not employ women because they think you are too soft. But if some people have gone through, like I always say, then others can also make it. Meanwhile, the Transport Ministry says it is ready to lend support to the newly formed group. Deputy Transport Minister Daniel Titus Glover says the Transport Ministry has a partnership program in place to train seafarers. He assured the group that women will not be discriminated against in the training program. This university, there is a collaboration between the Ministry, Ghana Maritime Authority, and the Denmark Institution um, to train seafarers. And the training of seafarers, it doesn't matter the sex. If women are included, we'll train them. Because we need to train these seafarers. When you go to the Philippines, that is one of their exports that they do to, 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 to generate revenue for the country. So we'll train more seafarers. It's an opportunity for us. Unfortunately, we don't have vessels. That is the only challenge that we have. But going forward in the future, we don't see a reason why we cannot hold our own small vessel that we can use to train our seafarers. The Africa Export Import Bank says it is ready to support any local bank to raise the minimum capital required by the central bank. The Bank of Ghana has set December 2018 as a deadline for commercial banks to meet the 400 million CD requirement. Though the Africa Bank is not in a position to invest in equities, it has the mandate to assist with raising capital from the international market. Adekina Ademola is the consultant of financial institutions trade finance at Africa Bank. But of course, we have a capital market and advisory team that can help um, African institutions to raise capital anywhere in the world because people respect us. They have a lot of regard for the management, for the board, and for what African Export Bank, Export Import Bank is doing. So our capital market and advisory can help any bank, African financial institutions, to raise capital. Um, we have the capacity to do that, so it's better they go through that. But as, an, as a body, we would not invest in equity, but we can help banks to raise equity. live on the marketplace with me Emmanuel Abwaji. We have let's turn attention now to the housing sector. The Ghana Real Estate Developers Association Greta was established 30 years ago to among others provide a united front in making recommendation to government on ways of promoting real estate development and seeking solutions to the practical problems associated. Well despite these bright ideals there's still a housing deficit of about two million. Now what should or what role should Greta be playing to overcome the housing challenge. Pa Patrick Ebu Bonfo is the new president of Greda. He joins me in the studio to help us understand some of the peculiarities in the industry and the solutions. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to the marketplace. Thank you. Now, so for the first time, I want to congratulate you for becoming the new president of Greda. All right. So, thank what do you bring on board? Um, well, I thank you very much. Uh, I've I've gathered quite some experience over the years with the association. We work tirelessly uh, in 
many areas, especially, um, most especially VAT in, uh, on real estate. We got it removed. Mm -hmm. um, in this new dispensation, um, together with my colleagues, we hope to uh, move this, um, our agenda forward. We want to look at um, three areas. Um, one is the area of uh, land litigation. Okay. Two is the area of legislation that supports the financial services sector, specifically the mortgage sector. And then thirdly also uh, greater to look into uh, coming out with greater, um, that is we have uh, mm. a company that will champion the affairs of uh, greater will play the role uh, that SNIT used to play mm. in the affairs of greater so we'll be working with government we'll be working with um, the legislature mm. and we'll be working also with the judiciary to try Very to now recently at your awards you know uh, ceremony at the aliza hotel now the minister for western housing rightly put it that from now on chiefs involved in double you know sale of lands will be prosecuted and if possibly jailed now, how do you hope to come into this? Because it's quite a sensitive issue when you have to <laughs> yes, deal with yes. chiefs for land. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Land litigation is a huge, huge problem for our industry. In mm. fact, it's a threat to the industry. So it's a right call that the minister made, and we support him uh, in this. We will do every possible best to support him in whatever area mm. or anyhow possible for him to um, push that. You know. Um, it's, it's very difficult and it affects mm. our pricing and it affects many things down the line. I mean, mm. we all live in homes and these homes are built on land. And so if land has an issue, uh, it, it is a fundamental threat to the human, human society. Yeah, so right. it's, it's a very serious issue and we support the, the, the call. We've been talking about land banks. How do land banks uh, you know, issue help to solve uh, the land challenge? <laughs> it, it, it goes a very long way because mm. you see, when the government owns lands, and uh, you go and acquire land from, from the government, you are sure that there will be nobody challenging you in terms mm -hmm. of your title. And uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the same way, um, if government you know, can do more in that you know, line, I, I have said before, as my humble uh, request or, or, or suggestion, that government should look at the allodial owners of land okay. and partner with them uh, instead of collecting money from them take land uh, in, in, in your cash to enable them you know, register their interest in, in, in their lands. Mm. Uh, it will go a very long way to um, you know, arrest the issue of um, land litigation. And also, uh, will, are you referring to centralizing land ownership in the country? Not centralizing, no. Mm. The Alodia owners respectively own their lands across mm. the country. Okay. Government is just going to work with them to say that, look, you know, you, you don't have title to your land. Okay. And these are the issues that create problems, problems for you and then investors. In the long run, it affects you also. You are impoverished, mm -hmm. although you have all this wealth of land. So if the government takes that land and um, is able to um, register the lands for those people, let's say government takes, is a, somebody owns a, you know, a, a thousand acres, mm -hmm. and government takes, um, uh, registers for them and takes 200 acres as fees, land fees. I mean, the government gets to own 200 acres uh, in whichever community that that mm. there are. So right. um, this is where I think um, it will go a very long way. Mm. All the, these land banks will go a very long way to, to solve these problems mm. in the that sector. Now, another thorny issue is high mortgage, you know, in the, in the housing industry. Now, how, what role can greater help to, to make houses really affordable for prospective owners? Yeah, cost of finance in this industry is mm. high. Mm. Uh, another reason for that is that uh, they see the banks or the financial sector sees it as a, a high risk area. And the same way, if the house, the cost of houses are high, then mortgages, um, you know, uh, will also be high. We are hoping that, uh, that we can solve this um, problem around um, the, like I said, the legal, um, you know, uh, foundation that the mortgage system is, is relying on. Mm. Uh, it's very difficult and very demoralizing for a mortgage company mm. who uh, will lend money to someone who needs to buy a home and when they, f they default and they need to recover, they spend eight years in court trying to mm. recover. I mean, it, it's, it's very demoralizing. No investor would like to do, go into that sector. And more and more we have seen financing in that sector shrinking. And that also means that financing for our industry is shrinking. Mm. And it's also a threat to the industry. So we have to do, take some deliberate steps to make sure 
that we, we make it attuned to what happens in Europe and America, mm -hmm. you know, whereby people can access mortgages easily. When you can access mortgages easily, it means that the risk is lower. They see the risk okay. is lower. And then the, the, when the, the risk is lower, the okay. price of mortgage will, will go down. Okay. Because he thinks that he, he won't have to spend too much money mm. to recover in case. And what about the dollarization of, uh, you know, houses uh, or cost of houses in dollars, price in dollars? Is this also not an issue? And what would Greta do? Or yeah, I think that... Yes, I think the problem really lies with the fact that we import most of our building materials. Mm. Um, going forward, I, I hope we can encourage every one of us in our industry to look at uh, you know, you know, using more local um, materials. Brick and tiles? Brick and tiles. I have, <laughs> I have used it. Perhaps I can say for sure that mm. the only real estate developer that has used this um, bricks, you know, hydrophone bricks on a commercial basis. To, to you know to build and uh, the the cost savings is quite significant. But, but people say this brick and tiles is quite expensive as compared to it is know, not. The, the conventional. <laughs> it is not yeah. like I said the, the the instance I just mentioned. Okay. Um, the cost savings is about thirty five percent between that and a concrete uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. house. Okay. Yeah, you save thirty five percent and definitely that will transfer you transfer that savings to the buyer. Okay. You know, ultimately, and mm -hmm. uh, this one is also 2.4 times stronger than the you know Sandcrest house. The walls are 10 feet, oh. mm -hmm. the, the, the 10 inches. Mm -hmm. The walls are 10 inches. You know, uh, it's not like, going to warm up. You no know, rooms of such. It's, it's as cool <laughs> as you can ever imagine. Okay, uh, you 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 will, you will hardly put on your air condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if so so let me ask you, what role? What is that role? Is Greta going to play? I mean, to, to come up or to come up with affordable housing with with governments, you know. Going forward, we have um, we uh, we heard something sweet from uh, our honourable minister. He mm. said uh, uh, they're going to remove taxes on building materials exactly. going forward, and mm. all this will translate into uh, reduced you know prices that we'll have to also give to the customer. And if we don't have to face the risk of buying land twice or, or thrice, we will also now be able to reduce prices. I mean, in, you know, it all adds up mm. in, both, in, the, in the cost builder. So if all of this should happen, I'm sure that the industry will respond favorably mm. and, uh, you know, build houses that are affordable for Mm. Uh, the word affordable really is. It's relative. Yes. <laughs> it is relative. Yes. It may be affordable to you, but yes. highly inaffordable to others. Yes, yes. But I think ha we have to start from somewhere. Mm. When the terrain is, you know, it's all right, I'm sure people will begin to bring in um, more um, technology that mm. will help us mm. deliver on affordable housing. Mm. Yeah. Now, did you share in this opinion put out by the housing minister that, you know, government is going to come up with a credible mortgage system? which will leverage on um, pension funds of workers, would it go a long way to actually reduce or uh, enable workers for, I mean, acquire houses of their own? I think it's a, it's, it's a good call. I mean, I think that um, anything for us that will um, bolster the mortgage environment is, is something that we're going to uh, uh, support. And um, we hope that um, he can bring that to fruition so that uh, people can you know, access. Mm. At least they can pay the minimum deposit required. For, uh, to qualify them for mortgages and so mm. on and so forth. So uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a call in the right direction mm. and uh, we support him with that, yeah. Right. So finally, before you go, what was the way forward, I mean, under your tenure as president, mm. what sort of changes do you hope to, to bring about in, in, in the industry? Well, like I said from the beginning, it's, it's just, just three areas. We want to look at the legislation, we want to look at the um, land litigation, okay. and we also want to look at the uh, greater development company um, doing something to um, uh, replace what Smith used to do for greater. Mm. Uh, so so well. Land litigation, are you bringing on board the chiefs? Are you going to dialogue with the owners of the lands, families and chiefs, so to speak? Yes, I mean, I, no, I want to tackle it from the angle of legislation. I want to rather okay. have a, a good conversation with legislature so that they can make the right kind of laws. And then the so you support the jailing of the chiefs? Then <laughs> 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 uh, they will be they will be on your neck seriously. <laughs> it is for yeah. our common good. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes, right. yes, right. yes. Many thanks for coming, yes, thank Mr. You. Patrick thank you uh, Bonfo yes. is uh, the new thank president you. of the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association. We've been talking about various issues, solutions to the challenges undermining uh, the house sector or the mining in acquisition of houses in that regard. Still on the live on Marketplace, the high cost of aviation fuel 
duties charged on spare parts, among other issues, are expected to, have be, to be addressed in the upcoming 2019 budget presentation. According to the Director General of the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, Simon Aluti, final fuel accounts for the chunk of airlines expenditure posing a major concern to airlines. He has been explaining further to Joy Business in this interview. You know, one major cost of airline operations is the cost of um, aviation fuel. And um, airlines will always appeal for uh, competitive pricing for aviation fuel. Airlines have also complained about the fees, charges, and taxes, you know, levied on them by the aviation authorities, the airports company, civil aviation, the handling agencies. It's a, we engage in constantly on the review of those charges. They've also complained about the imposition of um, duties on imported parts that the Ghanaian um, registered aircraft and um, it's an issue we've forwarded to the Ministry of Aviation and they are looking at it. I hope it will be addressed. Okay. All right, so we'll still be staying in aviation when we cross over to uh, France uh, where my colleague Isha Adu is standing by to bring us some updates. Airbus for, has for the first time brought journalists from across the African continent and aerospace professionals as well as government officials to Toulouse in France for the launch of a white paper titled The Great Enabler Aerospace in Africa. The discussions are exploring the potential of aerospace in Africa in creating jobs, enhancing security, improving agric disaster management and sparing the growth of the African continent. The event is being held in Mars Toulouse Function Center, some 45 minutes outside central Toulouse. Now, Isha Ado joins me on uh, Skype to tell us more. Isha, you're welcome to the marketplace. Thank you. All right, so who and who are uh, attending well, uh, the launch of this white paper? As you rightly said, um, the Airbus uh, brought together as well as uh, journalists from across the continent explore the possibilities of, of um, uh, the in uh, in Africa size. And uh, it will interest you to know that there's been several presentations about it and enhanced tourism and how we only that about 63 million uh, tourists across the continent. That can happen exponentially we're able to harness all the evidence that we think of food to the service if possible across the country. All right, now, one of the main setbacks of Ghana's aviation sector is a failure uh, to enhance or to achieve a single African air travel market. Has this issue come up uh, at the launch? It certainly has. I had a chat with the former CEO uh, of the uh, Ethiopian Airlines, uh, who uh, outlined the fact 27 countries across the world signed up as to the Super African Airline travel market. But as we see, there's still one little issue, which is the regulation text of the um, distributed solution, uh, which needs to be ironed out. Once that is done, hopefully by 2019, the heads of state in Addis Ababa. They will be in a position for that. But um, this is uh, one of the things. Cost of uh, airline tickets across the country, especially the fact that we don't have a big middle class. Uh, came, uh, it was revealing to learn that about $150 of a lot of tickets that we buy across the continent, it actually left East, that the country. Uh, all right, many thanks, uh, Ishirado. We are unable to get your speech clear, quite clear uh, because of some technical hitches here. And uh, let's go on to another story. The Ghana Union of Traders Association is angered at xenophobic allegations by Nigerian Union of Traders Association in Ghana against their hosts. Guta leaders cite the Nigerian traders of suggesting in a petition to the president, to President Buhari, that Ghanaians are maltreating them and denying them access to legitimate businesses. They allege the situation had led to the loss of lives in some instances, allegations the Ghanaian trader described as blatant lies and twisted facts. Prince Apia has more in this report. 
On October 9, 2018, the National Association of Nigerian Traders and the Nigerian Union of Traders Association in Ghana petitioned office of their president over alleged xenophobic attacks in Ghana. Because of what is going on, we want Mr. President to come and salvage the situation. Save our souls, correct? Yes. Save the souls of Nigerians in Ghana from xenophobic attacks, from the, 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 the dismantling of their means of livelihoods. President of the National Association of Nigerian Traders, Ken Okeaha, in another meeting with members, said actions by the Ghanaian counterparts violate ECOWAS protocols. One matter, a law that is inconsistent with that of ECOWAS protocols, with that of ECOWAS treaty, was pushed in by Ghanaian parliament to the extent that no foreigner is supposed to do business in Ghana except if you have one million dollars as investment capital. And we're crying for the whole world to hear that ECOWAS may hear ECOWAS may act before it is too late. There are many other nationals living in Nigeria. We might take steps also to crush integration, and that is not in the best interest of ECOWAS. Ghana Union of Traders Association, Gota, however, described the claims as fabrication of falsehood. Ashanti Regional General Secretary Muhammad Ali addressed the press conference in Kumase. In their petition, to His Excellency President Buhari, through his senior special advisor, Von Diaspora, Abike Dabiri Eriwa, Nita presented calculated stories of lies to win the sympathy of the ECOWAS community. They petitioned that Nigerians in Ghana, with a special reference to the Ashanti region, are being harassed, molested, and their shops burned down and locked are preventing them to do their business in a peaceful atmosphere. They claim as a result, a Nigerian woman has committed suicide. These are blatant lies. Guta says the death of the woman in question, which was being investigated by security agencies, had nothing to do with the trade issues. Mr. Ali says only people who have failed to comply with the law have had their shops closed. Recently, the president of Nigeria, His Excellency Mohammed Buhari, signed an executive order to prevent foreigners from doing jobs Nigerians can do. You can testify to that. We'll give you the documents. There is also a massive workforce, sorry, a massive task force operating in Nigeria, preventing foreigners from engaging in retail trade at the markets and business centers. That's go that goes by the name as Panda Special Tax Force on Foreign Trade. All we are saying is that Ghana is a sovereign state and its laws must be obeyed and adhered to by all and sundry, whether one is a citizen or a foreigner. As per the Ghana Investment Promotion Center Act 865, Section 27, foreign nationals residing in Ghana are barred from retail trade, which is the sole preserve of Ghanaians. The Ministry of Trade and Industries in Ghana formed a compliance committee to streamline the business operations of foreign nationals in retail trade. The committee and its operations uncovered certain illegalities some foreigners were perpetrating. The relationship between Ghana and Nigeria is crucial for the West African trade and region. It is therefore important a lasting solution is found to address it before the unpleasant happens. Prince Apia, reporting. All right, so we'll be certainly following up on this particular development to bring you updates as and when they unfold. And on that note, to wrap up this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace, my name is Imano Apuaji. Yeah, have a good afternoon.